we can't get out of this podcast without me understanding the difference between lasers, micro abrasions, micro needling, chemical peels. I can't understand any of these things, but you mentioned resurfacing. You mentioned my skin sucks. So clearly <laughs> before I go on the path of my rejuvenating uh, anti-aging protocol, I might as well do something to fix the situation we have going on here. And um, so tell me about sure. all these different I think we, techniques. We could do a crash course. I know we're, this podcast is running long, but it's just a massive subject to cover. Let's start and with lasers. Yeah. What, I mean, I, I mean. Could we take one step back maybe please. and talk about the difference between ablative and non-ablative and maybe talk about peels. So so maybe maybe the way to go is there are various technologies that will, in a controlled manner, injure the skin to harness the body's natural healing cascade, which then will produce the aesthetic benefits we're looking for, which is more collagen production, smoother skin, you know, less pigment issues. And that's the goal, right? And so the bottom line is there's there's a relationship with how aggressive the treatment is and how much of an aesthetic improvement you're going to get. But the more aggressive it is, the more downtime there is. So that's all that's always the kind of balancing act. And that's why there's such a confusing array of options that exist because there's a huge spectrum going from the least invasive, with, which has the least result, to the most aggressive with the best result. And so I guess to generalize, there are treatments that are not truly ablative, meaning they're going to penetrate through the skin. And then there are treatments that are, shall I, I think hopefully I set that up for you, Susan, to maybe go from there. So that's the definition. Ablative means it penetrates the skin? No. Oh, yes. Ablative, yes. And yep. non-ablative not, doesn't penetrate the skin. So what are the non-ablative, which are presumably the less severe, which means shorter recovery time, less overall response? So non-ablative things, you can start with even your topical skincare regimen because yep. that is going to remodel the skin and set the stage for you to even prime it so you make more collagen. And then you can do things such as light chemical peels, which are only going to affect the epidermis of the skin. You can do things like non-ablative fractional lasers. And those are going to, again, send tiny fractionated beams of light onto the very surface of the skin and just damage the upper layers of the epidermis. And that's going to stimulate a cascade of cytokines to, to build on the collagen and texture, but it's going to be minor. And they might help with some minor pigmentation issues. Those are um, non-ablative devices for resurfacing. What was we the have, last one? Not a fractional, non-ablative non fractional lasers. We also have non-ablative vascular lasers. Those are lasers that are going to penetrate with a beam of light to hit the dilated blood vessels in people who have rosacea. And What's the brand name on one of, of a non-ablative fractional? Fraxel or Clear and Brilliant. Okay, and I've within heard of that. Those, yeah, there are different ones. So Fraxel has multiple different ones. Clear and Brilliant is just superficial. And then you have non-ablative things like uh, vascular laser that will help treat broken blood vessels, scars, texture change. And that one, even though it's shattering some of the dilated blood vessels deep in the skin, it's not leaving an open wound on the surface. So when we say non-ablative, there might be things happening deep down, but the surface of the skin is intact. Yep. So there's no raw wound. Um, we might want to pause on that category for one second, just because that is probably the one of the most high yield areas for someone to try out as an initial kind of intervention at, at a, you know, with a physician or provider, because the downtime's easy. We're talking about non-ablative, you know, um, like for example, intense pulse light or broadband light, which is IPL or BBL for short. Those are in the category that Susan just mentioned of non-ablative light treatments. And it's a huge, huge category. There are so many devices in this category that it would be kind of silly to even list them, but they're very effective in that they don't have a lot of downtime and produce improvements that are are, are real for patients. Sorry to interrupt. No, I just no, I thought no we should problem. just pause there for one sec. Absolutely. And I so think a lot Mox, of them were... Moxie is another non-ablative. So I'd have to look and see what the technology on Moxie is. Okay. 
if it's, it's I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that one might be uh, radio frequency micro needling. I think that's right. Yeah. Yes. So that, that one kind of bridges the is, gap a little bit. It depends. It is semi ablative because okay. you're literally piercing the skin with a bunch of needles. Got it. And mm-hmm. delivering radio frequency energy through those needles. Um. And those will stimulate collagen. So anything that generates heat in the skin mm. to a certain level, will, to a certain temperature, I should say, will then cause the formation of something called heat shock protein. And that causes a whole cascade of other activity within the dermis of the cells, the dermis of the skin, to make you produce collagen, elastin, shrink the overactive sebaceous glands, and reduce some of the dilated blood vessels. So there is a lot of benefit beyond just treating the vasculature that you see. So I tell patients, like for example, if we treat their rosacea and they get improvement after two or three sessions, they should come every year Mm -hmm. and repeat it, even if their rosacea is quiet, because it really does help with anti-aging. And so from that standpoint, those are your non-ablative. And then if we go to ablative, we've got deeper chemical peels. We've got the modified TCA peels. We've got modified phenol peels. And then we have our ablative and ablative. So we don't need to worry about brand names at this point. We're really talking to the practitioner and saying, do we want to move into an ablative peel? I'm going to get yes. a better result, but I'm going to have a greater downtime. And presumably I need to do it less frequently. Yes. And that's exactly it. What you said is key. I think the big mistake is to come in and say, oh, all my friends are having moxie. I want moxie. Let's let's talk about what it is. We might have something that does similar results, or maybe even something that does better results. And or maybe it's not results. the right choice for you, even though your friend thinks exactly. you should get it. And so, the, the the field is so confusing to consumers, and honestly, even practitioners, because it's a gold rush, right? There's so much money to be made in this area. Every company is is getting private equity money and 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 getting an FDA approval for some kind of device because they want a piece of the action, and they're purposefully confusing everybody because it's like snake oil. You know, everybody wants to sell their product, and some of the products work well, some don't. Any products you think people should just absolutely avoid, just based on lack of efficacy? No, but I do caution my younger patients, the ones who are under the age of forty even up to 45 in some cases, to really avoid doing things such as ultrasound tissue tightening, radio frequency tissue tightening at that young of an age, because there is some fat atrophy that happens. And I would be yeah. caution against prematurely aging their face. Yeah, I agree. I mean, those are the categories that are probably have the most hoopla with the least effect. Yeah. Um, is ultrasound-based energy. And look, I mean, there once was a time where that was the only non-surgical option for tightening the neck, but it didn't do a great job, and most people have left it by the wayside. Uh, I like it, though, in addition to a biostimulatory filler. So you inject a little sculpture under the skin, and then you come over it with a ultrasound. Synergistic properties yes. can exist for and, those devices. And yes. that's what I was going to say, is you yeah. know, if you know your physics with all these devices, you can achieve so much with your lasers beyond what the company tries to sell you. How do you then decide? I understand why, I understand the fork in the road between ablative and non-ablative, but like, let's say once you commit to an ablative therapy, how are you deciding between a chemical peel, a laser, a micro needle? And I vaguely remember my wife telling me something or overhearing her and her friends saying that if um, if you had melasma, you couldn't do this one, but mm-hmm. you could do this one. Yeah. What are some of the do's and don'ts as you navigate that? So I think um, there, there are a lot of nuances to this conversation, but to generalize a little bit, um, chemical peels are generally safe for all skin tones, generally. Um, laser resurfacing ablative laser resurfacing can be riskier for higher Fitzpatrick skin types that have more pigmentation because the melanin lo- the melanin cells are sitting deeper in the skin. And the deeper the laser goes, the more it can create permanent injury to pigment cells and create permanent pigment problems. Whereas the chemical peels, you can control that depth a little differently. And, and so that's one, I would say, generalization uh, that, that's probably worth mentioning. I would not, I should not do a laser peel because I'm a... You can have a laser, but you're the kind of person who needs a lot of preparation and caution heading into it. You would need to probably get onto a regimen to control your pigment cells with hydroquinone. But why would I bother? Like why take the risk? Why not just do a chemical? Because the results could be better. 
I see. So, so I guess just to complete the conversation about the, the different categories, the most effective uh, non-surgical skin interventions are in the category of ablative lasers mm -hmm. and phenol peels because they go the deepest. And TCA. I'm going to have to throw that in there. TCA, sure. TCA the deep TCA. Peels. Deep TCA peels are something that should be done by someone who really knows what they're doing. Yeah. And I, and so going to your point, how do I yeah. choose? Sometimes on the same patient, I'll do the, all three. So on most of their face, I may do a medium depth TCA peel, especially because I can get the ears, I can get into the brows, I can feather onto the neck, into the hairline. So I don't leave any area unresurfaced. And the medium depth peels are going to go just to the level of what's called the papillary dermis, which is the sweet spot for tissue tightening. And peels of that sort. And this is TCA or phenol? TCA. And these peels penetrate and they percolate into pores. So I love peels for large pores. And they'll, you'll see the solution sit in the pores and they'll just go a little bit deeper just in those pores and as the tissue heals, they'll contract. Then I may take a patient who has very deep perioral lines yeah. and use my fractionated ablative CO2 laser on those. And then someone with redundant skin on the lower eyelids, I may take my phenol peel and apply it there. So in one sitting, yep. the patient might have all three, Makes but I'm going to pick and choose where I do it. In some patients, I may, depending if they don't want an eye lift, or I did an eye lift on them a number of years ago, and they're just starting to get redundant skin, I may just ablate that tissue with either my laser or the phenol peel and get a mini eye lift again that might buy them two or three more years. I'm Peter Atia. This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights, You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future.